Hey there, everyone. It feels like a Saturday. What? Do you know why it's a Saturday? What? Because there are 91 college basketball games today. That's how I knew it was a Saturday. And it's obviously, I'm obviously busy, as you can hear. There are not, not my kids in the background, but obviously kids in the background. Things are busy. And, um, but I do want to go over answers to all the questions that people have had about the algorithms that we sent out this morning. There's obviously NBA, NHL, um, college basketball, and I'm actually going to talk about football here briefly as well because we're going to do this video so quickly and concisely that it, we can get it all done. So first of all, let's talk about hockey. So hockey is a difficult game to forecast and predict. However, the algorithm has been doing really well, and if you've been paying attention, the picks of the day, the number one pick of the day, it has won about six out of the last seven days, and it's been doing that on average the last couple weeks. So today it says that St. Louis is the number one pick of the day against Montreal, a team that's really struggling. Uh, Lindgren going in net is the only thing that's a little suspect on that to me, but the algorithm usually knows what it's talking about. So when you can glance at, at this, at, you, know, you don't want to play all these games. If you're going to play a lot of games in hockey, you're going to find yourself winning half of them and losing half of them. Um, so you really have to focus on uh, large disparities in quality in games. And that's what the algorithm does. So it says St. Louis is the number one pick of the day. It has Washington as the number three pick of the day over Buffalo, but you can see the line is not that good there as well. But the number two pick of the day, which is a, a, a Minnesota team that is really playing fantastic lately, I think that's actually 100% of their games they've won in the last 15 days because it's trailing today's game because it's not finished yet. So I believe Minnesota is actually playing the best out of anybody right now. And they're going up against L.A. in L.A. Should I drive to that game today? No. I don't have time yeah. to do that. No, I don't have time to do that. It's too, no, it's too far away. It's three hours away. Yeah, we drive. Uh, we could drive, but, but it's too far. So anyway, that's, that's actually my pick of the day is Minnesota. Yeah. Now that's hockey. As you can say, don't care too much about the rest of it unless you're really going to spend a day watching a lot of games and really want to diagnose the, uh, the matchups there. How about NBA? I got a question about NBA. Hey, Ken. Ken, what's up? I, I saw it says, hey, wh why is the line so good for the Warriors against the Sixers? What, why? What's up? And I was like, you know what? I haven't looked into it, but I can say that, that the injuries, the first thing I checked was, well, what's the injury situation? And if you go check out the injury situation, you can see that Golden State's injuries are only Ignodala, Andre Ignodala, Ignod I don't know, I probably said that wrong. But point is, is that's it. Um, and he is impactful, but I don't know if he's that impactful. Uh, it doesn't say it's that big of a deal. So I don't know why this is all the way up here, but, but you're correctly reading into the algorithm where it says this is basically like um, a very high quality pick because the line is good and it's the second top pick of the day. So we'll see what happens there. Um, I always look at the health numbers to see who's hurting, like the Bulls apparently and the Heat both hurting, which makes me think this is a tougher game to pick. Um, but I guess Golden State, along with a Utah team that keeps winning at minus 265, both away teams, but um, I, don't want, I mean, I don't want to give specific betting advice because I, I, I'm always wrong, but just, just read the algorithm, right? That's it. So that's NBA. Um, now, how about college basketball? So people ask me, said, hey, Ken, Drake is not at home. All right, I fixed that. I don't know if any of the other teams are, are inverted in the home and away list here. If they are, because there are 91 games, and obviously it's tough to check them all over, uh, then, then let me know and we'll fix them. I already did some work on the lines where I thought lines or spreads were not accurate. Uh, so uh, this is an enormous list. So what, what do you do with a list like this on a day like this? Well, first thing you're supposed to do is you're supposed to click underdog and then home. And now we only have four underdogs because Drake is not at home against Clemson. Drake is at Clemson. So Drake got removed from this home underdog list. And now it's Holy Cross, Delaware State, Stephen F. Stephen F. Austin, Texas A&M. These are all, these are bad teams. Notice the, the strength of schedule differential on Holy Cross and Delaware State is really, really red. That means that these teams have played worse teams and I can understand why they're underdogs because they probably won't win. They've played a lot of weaker teams. Stephen F. Austin is, is a different situation and Texas A&M also has a positive beneficial strength of schedule factor. So these two 
are stronger picks according to all the information that the algorithm takes in, even though the margins on these two are higher. Uh, so this is just a very interesting way to read this board and read what this means compared to what the rest of it means. Um, so that, that's what the home underdog situation is. What about the away underdog situation? 18 games, no surprise, a lot on here. Now, in this situation, also, we're looking for green over here, and we're looking for a good line. I mean, these are all good lines because they're all underdogs. So something like UC Irvine at Fresno State. Um, UC Irvine is, is one of these at plus 120 that is way up there. Morgan State at Longwood is plus 350 at a 16% margin and has a benef, you know, positive strength of schedule differential. That's really, really juicy is what that is. So it's juicy right there. You, so that, that's how I would read this board is focus on here and then also focus on home teams, of which there are 47 today, and it will be just going down the list and picking the good lines because remember, when it comes to home teams, if it's above like, especially above 20% margin, for sure, like everything above here, this is Central Florida all the way to Providence. These games are all supposed to win. That's 13 games. Uh, it That's what it's supposed to do. Um, anyway, all right, so that's a college basketball review. Of course, you can go subscribe to these algorithms and get them by email every day and not have to wait for a video. Now let's talk about NFL. So I just updated an injury report and did this NFL work and emailed it out to people that are subs paying subscribers to the list. I am also going to go over the games briefly if you stuck it out in this video because I know you might care about NFL. Well, um, what, what could be taken from this because I don't want to spend forever on it? The Cowboys at Washington is the number one pick of the day. This is so weird because the algorithm has been favoring teams against Washington, I believe, the last three weeks, and it's lost every time. Washington has outperformed and beat the algorithm, I believe, three weeks in a row because they beat Tampa Bay, they beat Carolina, and then they just beat somebody last week, also in a good game. So... Now they're going in this divisional ri division rivalry where the winner of the NFC East is going to be going to the playoffs. You got an interesting game. It says Dallas crushes them on the road by 11 points. I, I even by more so in the alternate score with defensive injuries. So, I mean, I it's tough. <laughs> it's tough to have lost so many times in a row and then have to be the number one pick against it. Does he is like, is the algorithm not properly accounting for how Washington football club is playing? And I don't know the answer to that. So that's what happened there though. Then you have Ravens and Browns at an underdog line. Why is Lamar Jackson out? There's a lot of work that still needs to be done on this file. I just don't have time to do it. Don't care about guys. Cause I'm not betting this week, but I know you guys, a lot of you guys are. Lamar, is he injured? Uh, no, just Ricard and Boyle. I, I mean, I don't know. Oh, is, is Baltimore's defense severely injured? Actually, that's probably what the situation is. I bet you that's what it is. Alternate score is not as much as in favor. 26% Baltimore. Injured, but Cleveland finds ways to lose games this year, so I, I like that line. But I said the L word, so watch out, Baltimore. Uh, Chargers heavily favored against the Giants, heavily, heavily. Packers over the Bears, terrible line. Chiefs over the Raiders. Yeah, the Chiefs over the Raiders at home. I don't know if they're going to cover 9.5, but they're, they're probably going to beat the Raiders. Carolina and Atlanta, this too bad team rule. Don't play that. Saints and Jets favors the Saints. I, I, the, I don't like the Jets. I don't like anything about that game either. Saints are not playing well anyway. I, they they got to figure out their quarterback situation. A new quarterback on the Jets, that guy uh, Smith or something. He, he uh, or, I can't remember. The, the, uh, let's look it up. The, the, the quarterback on the Jets who had beat Cincinnati, and he also won a game the other week. What's his name? His name is it's not Josh Johnson, Joe Flacco, Zach. What was it? Zach Wilson? 
or Josh Johnson. I can't remember. Okay, we're looking at that. I know we're looking at that. Okay, so I don't know. Um, I'll just stay away from that game. Tennessee beats Jacksonville in a low-scoring game. Look at the alternate score being 16-15 in that game. Over-under is set at 43-and-a-half, so that, that's screaming out an under there. Pittsburgh beat Minnesota, uh, sorry, Minnesota beat Pittsburgh on Thursday night. I'm glad we didn't do this before Thursday night because this would have been a disappointment uh, that Pittsburgh would have put up about the same amount of points as they did in the projection but would have lost. Uh, Denver is supposed to beat Detroit barely, but this is kind of a too bad team rule. And then San Francisco beat Cincinnati 24-21, and the alternate score is almost exactly the same. Wow, that's a close one. They are favored by Vegas. Then you have Buffalo and Tampa Bay. Buffalo underdog line against Tampa Bay in Tampa Bay. Hmm. Says they win in both alternate and regular projection. Seattle barely beats Houston and loses in the alternate projection. So that's one of those where you consider taking Houston against Seattle on the other side of this. That's funny. But you know me, I always find stuff that loses. But it's funny because I would take that. If I were to play, if I drive to Las Vegas to make a bet between now and tomorrow, I might bet the plus 330 on Houston because of the alternate score, because Tyrod could play a good game, because the Seahawks are a team in disarray, in my opinion. But that's that. And then we got the Rams at Arizona. It says it's a tie game, and the line's only two and a half. So uh, probably an over. Oh, it's 51. It said I, oh, God, don't listen to me. Don't remember. Don't ever listen to me. I always listen to the algorithm. All right, guys, that's a huge long update. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm not going to do another one. Actually, I'm going to do a recap probably tonight. But if it's 10 degrees outside, I'm not doing it from my car again. That was too cold last night. All right, so good luck, everybody. Now your picks be winning.